What is up, YouTube? It is Docky Style Gaming or DSG, and we are back at it again with another Anthem video for today. I know I've been a little late with my Anthem videos, but I've had a lot to take note of. Mark Dara, the game director of Anthem, or executive producer, I should say, of Anthem, has been spoiling a lot, actually. He's been talking about a lot in interviews. He's been answering a bunch of questions on Twitter. So I got a lot of information for you. I ha it's actually so much, I kind of actually have to break it up into three videos. It's, it's ridiculous how much he's, uh, he's actually revealed. Now in this video, we'll be talking about the stuff that he's pretty much 100% confirmed in game. And then we're also going to talk about the stuff that he kind of hinted at, but also some questions he kind of wouldn't give us a straight answer for, which is a more or less like, yeah, it'll probably happen. So <laughs> before we get into that, you already know what I'm about to do. We just hit 400 subs in under a week. That's ridiculous. We just did a 300 sub giveaway this Thursday where you just hit 400 by Tuesday. So you guys are amazing. You already know I'm doing a giveaway for that. I will be doing it in a separate video. I don't want to waste your time with the whole giveaway talk, but thanks everybody who's liked, commented, and subscribed. You guys are amazing for sharing my videos, for watching, giving me views. I love all y'all, so thanks for that. Now that that's out the way, let's get into the actual video itself. Now, Mark Dara, like I said, he is the executive producer of Anthem. And he's been giving us a bunch of information on pretty much a, a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming out or that's going to be happening. He answered a bunch of questions that I know a lot of people had questions for. He answered some things, too, that I had even mentioned in previous videos that I'm glad that he kind of cleared up, too, so I can actually give you all that information as well now that we do have definitive answers for some of these things. So actually getting into that, the first thing that was mentioned was the weather in the game. Now, in my last video, I talked about the ecosystem and how different enemies spawn during the day and night and then different enemies also spawn during different times or different weather. Now, by weather, I had originally assumed that he meant by the Shaper Storm because I didn't really think there would be a true weather system in game. But when asked if there would be weather in the game, i.e. snow, rain, etc., he did say that there will be a weather system in game. So that's pretty cool to take note of. And it's even more fantastic because that's just going to add so much more to the world of Anthem itself. The fact that we're actually going to have a, we a true weather system in an open world game this massive. Like talking about how in my last video, how they always want you to come back and have the world feel different. Now, it will legit feel and look different. I, I even wonder how it'll play in some cases. So that's pretty that's that's definitely something fantastic that. Uh, I'm happy to see and hear that, that that's going to be coming to the game. Now, uh, they talked about item drops for a bit as well. Now, with item drops, they mentioned uh, that item drops are going to be based on your freelancer's level. Mainly for easier javelin capabilities, but essentially, whatever your javel I mean, your freelancer is, uh, level it is, that's the level drops you'll get. So, if your uh, freelancer is level 1, you'll get a level 1, you know, weapon drop. Or a level one gear drop or whatever whatever it may be so depending on your actual freelancers level will determine the actual uh level of items that you get in the game now onto a side note with the loot they did say uh that your level is determined uh by the drops and not the enemies now what they mean by that is that uh it's, it's determined by your level, your personal level, oh, like, I, like I said before, is not determined by the enemies, that you, the difficulty of enemies. So, i.e., your level 1, fighting a level 100 enemy. Well, just because you beat a level 100 enemy, you're not going to get a higher level item. You'll still get a level 1 item drop, even though you fought a higher level enemy. So, it's still going to be based on your personal level, not enemy levels, uh, when asked about that. Because they there was kind of a little power leveling talk that was going on, and that that was one of the questions that was brought up as well. Now, also another loot question uh, that they talked about too was uh, the loot drops, and they said that the loot drops are going to be instance to players, similar to how Destiny is, where each individual player sees their own engrams. Like, uh, so you don't have to worry about other players taking your loot 
or being, you know, fighting over some, a bunch of loot on the ground and you trying to run and be the first one to get it. Everybody sees their own loot in the game and everybody gets their own specific loot in the game because it's instanced to that play, to the individual players themselves. So that's something cool. He said, I'm glad that they kind of uh, talked a bit more about the loot in game. Now, on to a bit of support about the game that was uh, confirmed. Uh, they were asked about mouse and keyboard support for the game. And for PC, they said, of course, I mean, PC is going to have mouse and keyboard, but they did say that uh, PC will also have controller support. So Xbox, PlayStation, uh, you know, a regular, uh, different uh, gaming controller you'll be able to use for PC. Now for console players, sadly, they did say that there is no mouse and keyboard support for console, but that's just at the moment. So right now there are no plans, but it could come in the future. For the people who do like to play mouse and keyboard, I know Warframe literally just added that feature uh, in their their own game a couple uh, weeks ago, I believe. So yeah, it's just probably not a thing that a lot of people do, but some people prefer it. So and that's probably just what something that wasn't really on their radar. So that's something like I said, it's it's not happening for console, but it uh it's just not happening at the moment. So it still could come. Now, on to a, a bit more about the support. They were also asked about crossplay between games, between platforms, Xbox, PC, PlayStation, PC, Xbox, PC, PlayStation, all together. I mean, we all kind of know the answer to this. No. <laughs> like, we know Sony and Microsoft don't play well together. And you have the occasional PC console crossover uh, games. But for the most part, we kind of all knew that there wasn't going to be crossplay with Anthem. So uh, they did go ahead and just straight up answer that, that no there's no crossplay which again wasn't expected i mean it was you know expected of them to say now on to the, a bit of the story and the cutscenes. they said that there will, will be multiple cutscenes in this game but the cutscenes won't have dialogue options so by dialogue options whenever you're running through the story i, I don't think i mentioned this in a video before but you will have different outcomes different choices different things that you do in game that uh, affect uh, how your game turns out, how your Fortarsis looks, everything like that, depending on the options and choices you do in a game. Now, with the cinematic uh, cutscenes, they said there won't be multiple choice or there won't be dialogue options, at least in the game, in the cutscenes, which I kind of expected, but that's just something they wanted to point out. And I'm actually kind of happy that we're even getting so many cutscenes by the way that he kind of talked about it because i'm i'm all for my game having a lot of uh, a, you know a major story focused game at least to have a lot of cutscenes. like yeah i love a lot of gameplay but i like a lot of cutscenes to flesh out the lore of the game as well so there are multiple cutscenes in the game and the cutscenes will pretty much run interrupted it seems so interrupted cutscenes, which are is nice to see so uh on to the next thing that they kind of talked about was the uh that the essentially the the world a bit they kind of talked about the different things that kind of happened in the world of anthem and it got into the whole traveling mechanic in game in the, the map at least so they were asking about uh is there a fast travel option for the game and essentially they said yes that there will be different fast travel points on the map so that you're not always constantly just flying everywhere Again, they haven't really given us a specific size of the map itself, but by everything we see, we've seen so far, it looks pretty damn big. So, even though I'm pretty sure they want us to explore and see all the gorgeous scenery, I, I also understand why they give us fast travel options because we might be uh, flying for like minutes at a time, and the fact that our jets have to kind of cool off. And then reset, you know, it would be kind of tedious to just fly all across the map. So they did say that there will be a uh, an actual fast travel option. But when it comes to uh, the multiplayer option in free roam, whenever you're instancing with another player, you'll be instantly fast travel to them, which was something uh, I did want to point out as well that he said about, uh, I guess, the fast travel in the game. Now. Uh, actually, and this kind of ties into that too, uh, fast traveling with other players, they mentioned that there will actually be rewards for helping players complete missions in the game. So that's kind of cool. You know, they're, they're definitely encouraging that other players help other players. 
But uh, the fact that, I mean, literally just by helping somebody complete a mission, you're also earning gear as well is something fantastic to see. So they didn't go into the details about the missions itself, like what type of missions it would be, like if it's story missions, if it's like contracts or anything like that. But they did say you'll actually get uh, you'll get rewards for doing it. So that's something to take note of now uh, about the javelins that they kind of went into. They were talking about switching of javelins and where you'd be able to switch the javelins in game. And they said that as of now, the only places you'll be able to switch between javelins are going to be uh, Fort Tarsus and your Strider are the only places you'll be able to do this, uh, do uh, switch your javelins at. Now, there are going to be resupply locations in the game, which I haven't covered yet because it was actually just mentioned in some of the info that I've been uh, taking notes on. But it doesn't appear that those locations you'll be able to switch your javelins. So Fort Tarsus and Strider are the only places you'll be able to do it, i.e. places where you pick up your missions. So what they're essentially saying is before you start your mission, make sure you're on the javelin you want to be on before you run the mission itself. So... On to the next point, it's something I'm kind of happy for that they act that they finally addressed because I know it was asked before, but they didn't really mention uh, they didn't mention it at all. But they did say that there will be emotes in the game. So, you know, after you beat a boss <laughs> and you want to celebrate with your team, you can do whatever you want, dance, whatever celebration they'll add to the game. I don't know the like level of it. I don't know how many you'll be able to have one at a time. They did just say. And confirm that there will be emotes in the game. Now something they also confirmed-ish. Well confirmed to not be in the game I should say. Was pets. Apparently that was a question that was asked a lot. But there aren't going to be pets in the game. Which I wasn't expecting them to be there to be pets in the game. But that was a question that was asked. And he answered it. There's no pets for those people who are. Want to know if you can have a companion in the game. <laughs> now. Let's get into a bit about the flight again. Uh, now, I covered in a previous video how where when you fly through waterfalls, you kind of re uh, you cool off your jets, so to speak. Now, also, they, they did uh, make a point to say that thrusters also cool down faster if you don't reach your overheat point. So as long as you make sure your stamina meter isn't going to max out your, uh, and doesn't reach its overheat point, your, uh, your thrusters will cool down faster, essentially letting you fly a bit longer. So, you know, keep note of that whenever you're flying. Just watch out, I guess, for your stamina. There's also something more about the stamina, but I'm actually going to cover that in a, another video as well. Because like I said, he he did he gave away a lot of information and just some of the stuff that he's been talking about. Now, some of the other uh, another thing that I was happy to see that he asked that I had kind of talked about in another video that I was unsure of was the ultimate abilities. Now, I think it was, I believe it was my Colossus uh, or my or my Ranger. One of the videos, I was wondering how you actually built your ultimate ability. And uh, I didn't know if it was going to be ore pickups because uh, there are ore drops, health drops, you know, things like that. I didn't know if it was going to be based off the kills or whatnot. And they did actually mention that it will be based off your damage output in the game. So I'm assuming it'll be like the numbers that we keep seeing all that damage in the game. I'm assuming that is most likely what it'll be. But that's apparently uh, how you build up your your ultimate uh, ability in game. They did say it's still being tuned at the moment. But uh, the amount of damage you do right now will determine how fast your ability charges. So I'm assuming combos also help increase it. You know, massive amount of numbers. I'm wondering, though, if the stronger your weapon, the faster your super builds then, because, I mean, if it goes off of damage, if you have a really powerful weapon that's dealing a massive amount of damage, you know, and then also with the storm, I wonder what his ability would be since he's considered the glass cannon of the uh, of the javelins, meaning he does just a ridiculous amount of damage. That would mean that he's his supers probably charges the fastest, but they did say it's being tuned, so who knows? Now, here's some things that I kind of thought were self-explanatory, but apparently people wanted to know. So these are some things that were asked uh, that he answered. They asked about a colorblind mode. So, yes, <laughs> there will be colorblind mode for all you people who, who need it. And then people who just, for some reason, like to play in colorblind mode. I'm not going to lie. I used to do it in Destiny 1 for some reason. But 
that's a thing. Uh, now, he did mention also that there will be no friendly fire or collateral damage at the moment, which is weird. <laughs> like, I don't know how I feel about that. And being a dude that used to play Call of Duty, and I would troll the mess out of my friends with flash <laughs> bangs, uh, concussion grenades. I would be killing them in a uh, hardcore team deathmatch. Like, I don't know how I feel too much about friendly fire collateral damage because um yeah that's i feel like that's going to be some hardcore griefing not gonna lie now they said there's no friendly fire or collateral damage but they did also say at the moment so i don't know what's going to happen with that and i guess we'll just wait and see but there is none right now no friendly fire no collateral damage now also they were asked about the scar and they asked him if they were aliens, which, I mean, eh, I guess that's a question for him. But he did mention that the Scar aren't aliens, but they definitely aren't humans, which both I kind of assumed. Like, I just assumed the Shaper artifacts created them because they said they were mutating things in the Earth. So I assumed that's where they had came from. But, you know, there's your definitive answer. They're not aliens, but they're not humans. <laughs> that's really an answer. Now... Go to the last two points of things that he's confirmed. Now, we were talking about the flight and freedom that you'll have in the game. Now, when talking about it, he said that you'll be able to fly wherever you want in free play. Do whatever you want, go wherever you want to go in free play. But in missions and solo play, uh, they'll pretty much, well, not solo free play, but solo play, like in missions story-wise, uh, they're going to try and do things to make sure that you stay on like the beaten path in your story mission. So it's not going to be like full on, you know, free roam, but you'll still be able to, you'll still have some freedom at least, but they're going to try and make sure that you kind of stay on your mission track at least. So it could be them just putting up, you know, random ba barriers that they generate for the mission or something like that. So you can't exit, but who knows? But like I said, that was something to take note of. Now, lastly, the thing, I'm personally most excited for is fully voiced characters. Yes, our characters will have voices, and yes, I'm super excited for that. Why am I super excited for that? Play Curse of Osiris Destiny 2. Yeah, go play it. I'll wait. Oh, have you played it? You probably didn't. Good, you didn't miss out on anything. You know why? Because you couldn't even hear your guardian talk. It was like the worst. I'm not going to get into it. I'm just glad our characters can talk. I'm super happy our characters can talk. So that's something they said was happening. And I'm happy to see that. Now, that's pretty much everything he's kind of confirmed just straight up off the back. Like I said, I'm personally happy for it. I can't wait for it. And what he also kind of mentioned uh, as well, I guess on a side note, because I kind of covered everything he mentioned. He did say his Col the Colossus is his favorite javelin of... I guess all of them that are being launched. So take that uh, as what you will. Like, I don't think he's trying to say like, oh, the Colossus is the best javelin, the strongest javelin, anything like that. That's just his personal favorite javelin. So, you know, now we're going to get on to questions that he actually wouldn't answer. So pretty much the, okay, yeah, this is probably going to happen type of thing. So <laughs> when asked about the movement speed, uh, previous, how we were saying that, uh, that each character will have its own individual uh, will have its own movement speed. Uh, actually, I don't know if I covered that. I think I did, but uh, but the uh, yeah, I actually didn't cover that in my last part. But apparently, the uh, they were asking about movement speed. So according to Mark Dara, the the javelins will have the exact same movement speed outside of combat. Mainly, it's for the Colossus because they don't want the Colossus to always be far behind. But outside of combat, they'll all have the exact same movement speed. But I guess back to this to this point, he asked him about movement speed and stealth. Now, he completely answered the question about movement speed. Outside of combat, all characters will move the exact same. Uh, but in combat, you know, they'll all have the different speed. He did say the Colossus is the least nimble of them all. But then he just moved on to the next question. He completely ignored stealth again that's the second time stealth was mentioned and he's ignored it so, which leads me to assume the other uh javelin that they keep ignoring the interceptor 
I, like I said, I really feel like the Interceptor is going to have a stealth mechanic. I mentioned it in my uh, Interceptor video, but I feel like if any Javelin was to have a stealth mechanic, it's going to be him. Now, another uh, questions that he was kind of wouldn't answer were uh, Elder Game or the End Game questions, which I actually covered quite a bit of that in my last gameplay uh, video because they did already talk a bit about the different things that you'll be able to do in the end game, but he didn't really go into detail in many of those uh, questions. And then also alliances and alliance sizes, he didn't really want to answer any of those questions at the moment either. Now, these last three items are things that he asked uh, that were like questions and answers. So when asked about a melee-based javelin, he did say possibly, but they're not talking about post-launch uh, plans yet meaning yeah there's probably more javelins to come which i i think we all assumed i mentioned that in my interceptor video as well even showed a clip of it that they did say that there will be other javelins coming in the game that you know they're just not ready to talk about it so you know that's something to take note of that there may possibly be a melee based javelin at some point in the game he did say possibly so who knows now uh another question that was asked was will uh there be special javelin gear sets in the game that unlock special perks when you complete the full gear set and his answer simply was we'll talk about loot and progression later that was it like <laughs> he pretty much didn't want to talk about it so he didn't confirm it but he didn't deny it so <laughs> who knows I mean, that, that would make sense, though. Gear sets in games, that's a pretty common thing in most games. So I could see that being a thing and why he didn't want to answer it right now. Now, the last thing was something I was kind of surprised about was was asked, uh, what will our, our apartments in Fort Tarsus be like? And I was just like, wait, they covered that at some point? Like, I've been pretty, like, scouring a lot of stuff in terms of Anthem and didn't know we were going to have apartments, but apparently... We are, but when asked about it, he simply just said details to come later. So he didn't go into detail on that, but he didn't also, you know, deny it. I mean, he was kind of telling us, yeah, we are going to have apartments, but he'll give us more details on it. But that's pretty much all that uh, I got for this video. Like I said, I have another uh, a really big question and answer video from him specifically like uh some of them are most of them are like twitter questions that he kind of that he was uh answering from people uh which i feel like he revealed even more he even talked a bit more about the dominion and we've actually seen the dominion's javelin and i'll be talking about that in my other video but uh but yeah he covered a lot he talked about a lot that's all i got for this video though at least like i said i got two more major videos covering his uh question and answer segments and some of the other things one's going to be all about the customization questions and answers that uh he covered and then another one like i said it would be just the general questions and answers because this was most of the stuff that was just kind of confirmed that i wanted to uh talk about so that's all i got for this video guys thank you all for watching thank you all for subscribing like i said i got more anthem videos on the way so if you like getting all this information, like I said, I am doing everything I can to find as much information for you guys as possible. And I still don't think many other YouTubers have done this much to find this much information for you. But the second something drops, I will find it. Even if I don't release it the first day, I am compiling it for you to give you a big video so you got all the information you guys need. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing. Hit 400 subs because all of you guys are freaking amazing i'm out thanks for watching peace